So now we here we have a um, an alkene reacting with HBr, but not the normal HB, just HBr by itself, but HBr in the presence of peroxides. Right? The peroxide, peroxy means two oxygens bond to each other. It's a peroxide. So it's gonna be different than normal HBr. Normal HBr, if it, just, if it was just HBr, if I number these alkenes, or this alkene, carbon one and two, bromine's gonna end up on carbon one, that Markovnikov product. Right? That's we make a carbocation, right? The pi bond attacks, make a carbocation, the most substituted carbon, stabilized by hyperconjugation, all that good stuff. And we'd get attack from both sides. This is gonna be a radical reaction, so it's gonna be a little different. So the first step in this reaction is going to be the initiation, right? The initiator breaking up. The peroxide, and there's two of them, breaks. And it is gonna react first with HBr, another pretty reactive bond. What's that going to make? It's going to make Br dot plus ROH plus there's still another RO dot floating around as well. Okay. Now once we have Br dot, how's that going to react with carbon one and two? So where, so just similarly, similarly to a carbocation, a radicals are electron deficient. So where would we rather have a radical on? Carbon one or carbon two? One, right? It's more substituted. So again, why is why is a more substituted radical more stable? Because of hyperconjugation, right? Those sigma bonds, two bonds away, can help stabilize it. So what's going to happen? So where's where's the bromine going to end up? Which carbon? Two. And the other rad the other electron from the pi bond goes to carbon one. Two. Good. Okay. But obviously not, we're not going to stop here. So we're, well, what's the next thing we need to do? We need to actually get rid of that radical. So we can use, there's more, let's say there's more HBr in the system. We need to get that H, right? We need to get that H on there. So that's going to happen. And now we're going to make Br dot again. And what else are we going to make? What's the other key difference here? When that H becomes bonded to carbon 1, is that H going to come from the top, the bottom, or both? What's the hybridization state of a radical? SP2. What's the geometry of an SP2 hybridized atom? It's planar. Right, so it's a p orbital, so the hydrogen can come from the top or the bottom. So what does that mean? Does that matter in this case? It does matter, because carbon one carbon one, carbon two, carbon one here has how many things bonded to it? How many different things bonded to it? Four different things bonded to it. That's correct, right? <coughs> what hybridization state is it? SP3. It's an asymmetric center. So when this hydrogen added in this step, it could have came from the top or the bottom. So we need to draw wedges and hatches here because we get both enantiomers. Also, there's already, everybody noticed along the way, there's been a stereo center. So what did we just make? Do we make enantiomers, diastereomers, we made diastereomers. So let's, if we only had one stereo, if we were only making this one stereo center, it would be a racemic mixture. But since this never changes, let's look at, let's look what they look, let's see what they look like.
So the H here could be down, or the H could be up, right? Carbon one, carbon two, carbon one, carbon two, right? This asymmetric center stays the same in both cases. This one changes. Those are not enantiomers, those are diastereomers. Remember, diastereomers is, are molecules that share one stereocenter. At least one is the same, and it, everything else can be different. So one is the same, one is different. These are diastereomers. No, the bond between carbon one and two is wedged or hatched. I, I said you don't necessarily have to draw it. So in this case, I would draw it as wedged. In this case, I would draw it as hatched. I was just trying to show, the, emphasize the hydrogen is really the key, right? Key from this step coming from the top and the bottom. Yep. Yeah, if you have wedges and hatches, right? So for this one, then the H that's on here has to be hatched, right? In both cases. Sometimes we just don't draw both things in. But it's always there. 